Expressions of Art is supported in part by the California Arts Council, a state agency. Learn more at www.arts.ca.gov. And the City of San Bernardino Fine Arts Commission, with its commitment to visual and performing arts organizations that enhances the cultural and economic well-being of the community. expression. It provides an image to express joy, sorrow, triumph, love, and so much more. Art is symbolic, traditional, and contemporary. It comes in so many forms, dance, music, song, theater, photography. It's on stage and on a canvas. The arts can play a critical role in our lives. Today's show will introduce you to five organizations that are working to keep the arts alive in our community. A young lady who was 15 said, Mrs. Takia, do you think you might ever start an orchestra for kids like me? The story is still difficult for me to tell. Symphony Jeunesse Youth Orchestra is an organization for serious middle and high school students who play string instruments looking for a high caliber of learning. Serious student musicians were craving access to professional instruction and guidance. The organization holds auditions and offers focused training. The students are given the opportunity to tour and perform at a number of venues, giving them a real taste of a professional musician's world. This orchestra is the kind of challenge the students seek and value. I knew there was a need for youth string orchestra in this community. I had many parents, many students come to me and say, um, what am I going to do in middle school and high school? Where, where am I going to play? Well, I started playing in this orchestra when I was in the seventh grade, uh, and this is my fifth year. When I started, I wanted an orchestra that would grow me as a musician, and I wanted to stay with Ms. Takia because um, she taught me when I was in elementary school. But when I moved on to middle school, she wasn't at the middle school that I went to. I was already teaching 10 classes a day. I didn't know how I could possibly fit one more thing into the schedule. I was producing the, the uh, orchestra for the county. I was playing professionally, and I just didn't know how I was going to put one more thing on the plate. I had been looking for something very similar to this, but honestly, I couldn't find anything that was at the level that I really wanted to be part of. I just remember one Saturday morning waking up, sitting bolt upright, saying, I have to do this for these children. And I made a plan in my head, but I didn't know if there was support for such a thing. I started asking people in the community, do you think something like this might be successful? I wanted to play because I found that the high school orchestras that I was involved in weren't playing the level of music that I wanted to play, so I found that this was more challenging. 
I was given a very generous grant of $6,000 by the Frank Plash Endowment. I was elated. I knew that we could get started. I fell in love with it instantly and I knew I wanted to be a part of this the minute I saw it. On June 28, 2008, I opened those doors and in walked 12 young people. To find out more about Symphony Jeunesse Youth Orchestra and to discover where and when you can see these gifted musicians perform, visit their website at symphoniejeunesse.org. What is opera theater? It's theater that is basically sung almost the whole time. It's the same as a play, only everybody, rather than speaking the whole time, they're singing the whole time. Opera theater is a combination of the arts with music and singing and sometimes with dance, all which to help to tell a story. The California State University San Bernardino Opera Theater exposes students to opera, in many cases, for the very first time. Under the leadership of Professor Dr. Stacy Frazier, Cal State San Bernardino produces a couple of productions each year. She knows firsthand how much goes into each performance with musicians, performers, makeup, and costumes. We spoke with Dr. Frazier about the program and its importance to the university, the students, and the community. I've been here 10 years. I teach applied voice and run the opera theater program. The very first year, they gave me $1,000. And I don't know how it happened, but I, I put together an evening of scenes with costumes and everything. You know, in traditional opera singing, the way I was trained, I mean, you stand and sing. And that kind of model just can't exist anymore. I mean, there are very few voices in this world that can just stand and sing. You need to be able to tell a story. I knew of this piece, and I knew it's, it's a 40-minute avant-garde piece from uh, the middle of the last century. So it's an amazing piece, and it's a very difficult piece. And I couldn't think of anyone better to ask than Stacy Frazier. OK, have a reason to be out here. I love musical theater, so I tend to stage my operas the way I would if, if it was musical theater. I think it's an extension of musical theater. I sent her a sheepish email in August of, of last year. Uh, hey, take a look at this. Maybe we can find a spot for it and perform it a couple times. And without hesitation, she said yes. Stacy decided to ask me to come in on this just uh, about six weeks ago. And of course she knew all the music and everything and, and she'd had this grant that was helping to fund the whole project. Since 2009 we've been doing a full production every year. But in order to make that happen you need a lot more money than a thousand dollars. So I started grant writing and that's how we've been able to sustain full productions. But because opera is a combination of all the arts, it's just generally, it's going to be more expensive. It can't survive, not on the level that I've been doing the shows without grant funding. My job was to come in and help her with the acting and try to stage it so we can tell the story visually along with the music. I really like doing it. It's fun. I mean, it's a lot of work, but it's a really cool thing to be on the other side. I came to it from the performer point of view, and now I'm on the other side. As uh, a professor of theater here at Cal State San Bernardino, I do this because I guess it's part of professional development, but it's because this is how I can express myself as a director. So I, I'm doing this as a volunteer for love. 
To learn more about California State University San Bernardino's Opera Theater Program, visit the university's website at cal.csusb.edu slash music. As an after school program, we don't just consider ourselves to be where we're just watching someone's children from 2.30 to 7. We're enriching their lives through art. A coma means tolerance and patience, and that's the kind of positive attitude the mentors at Acoma Unity Center demonstrate for the students who attend this after school enrichment program. The students are given academic assistance and are exposed to culture and the arts. Their mission is to unify, support, educate, heal, and empower people of color through youth development. In order to strengthen the community, it's essential for students to have a place to go to build confidence and strengthen their abilities. The Acoma Unity Center is located at the Anne Shirelles Park on the west side of San Bernardino. As a founder of this particular organization, um, we wanted to start with the children. Uh, Thursdays we do dancing with Sister Makeda. It's fun. A lot of things go on here at the center. Our pride and joy are African drum uh, and dancers uh, led by Sister Makeda Kumasi. because we, our next performance will be at the San Bernardino Arts Festival. Dance is so powerful. It is really what has kept us alive and has sustained us through some very terrible times. And so to be able to give this gift to our children and just watch them smile and enjoy themselves, it just absolutely warms my heart. We have drummers, we have uh, keyboards that our children learn, are learning to play a song, an instru uh, instrument, you know, and a musical piece right now. We have a mentoring program. Our kids come in every day and they get directly into homework after they have a snack. The mentors really help me when I need help with my math. So these are just some of the things that the school districts aren't able or don't provide any longer. You know, fine arts has been cut out, you know, in many districts. So we're very thankful to the San Bernardino Fine Arts Commission, who does give us a grant every year um, to be able to do these type of services, because without them, we just would not be able to do that. A coma! One of the young ladies in the Upper Scholars, that is middle school and high school uh, young girls, her mentor came and told me that she stated that a coma, the children in her class were her family. And uh, I found that to be very touching um, because a coma um, means tolerance and patience. And it's something that we're teaching the children that they must have within for each other, for their fellow uh, student, for their fellow brother or sister. To learn more about the program and the many classes, events, and services they offer, visit the Acoma Unity Center website at acomaunitycenter.org. It's just one place for all kinds of artists to get together, showcase their artwork, and to celebrate in one thing, and that's the arts. There are so many great examples of the arts in our region. The city of San Bernardino hosts the Arts Fest that showcases several art programs that are accessible in the city. This event brings over a hundred local artists of all levels and genres. 
together from student bands and musicians playing on multiple stages to creative people presenting their work in jewelry, canvas, and clay. This is a free full day event. The heart and soul of our community is the arts. We have the Children's uh, Center up here. We have over 100 artists in the concourse. We have a stage with music. We have food. Our goal with Arts Fest is to bring out local community artists. Within the concourse, we have all of our standard artists, anything from painting, woodworking, glass, metalwork, sculptures. On our band stage, we have everything from the school district to local bands. Uh, we've got larger groups, we've got younger groups. Um, one of our closers is actually a really awesome group. They were really excited to be here, the Salty Raisins. They are stoked to be able to close out the event. So we've got just a huge variety of everything here. I've just recently started putting my stuff out, like at events like this or out to the public. Digital, charcoal, all the way to acrylic and spray paint. So I have some shirts that I screen printed myself. So it's hard for artists nowadays to get recognition for what they do. So I feel like events like this, where um, they're put on for the community, by the community, are really important. Well, I received an email. I hadn't heard of this event before, and I just thought I'd participate and see uh, who I can meet. And you know, it's just always fun to associate with other artists. Body painting, like making up creatures and uh, special effects. We actually have a committee for SB Arts Fest that we all work together on. So our big players are the both of the consulates, the Mexican consulate and the Guatemalan consulate. When we start participating in those these events of art, we think that with our the art is a expression of our souls. Valley College plays a huge part. The school district, uh, Brian Wing, is operating our band stage. He provides all the sound for it. Parks and Rec has their kids' corner. Um, the 66er Stadium has been amazing and very accommodating for our events. Uh, so it's one big group effort with everybody working together on it. community is excited about it, the city is excited about it, so having that together I think builds a really strong bond. The San Bernardino Arts Fest is a wonderful event for local artists to showcase their art and gain exposure for their work. It's nice to feature artists from our own backyard. You can learn more about the annual Arts Fest and how you can be a part of it each year by visiting the City of San Bernardino's website sbcity.org We wanted in this part of the city to have an organization that will respond to the needs of the people in the arts. A wide spectrum of the arts. Thanks to the enthusiasm and kindness of volunteers and individuals with a vision, what began as an abandoned, boarded-up building on its way to demolition has been restored into a cultural center infusing a broad spectrum of the arts. There's no shortage of activities, classes, and resources at the Garcia Center. Years ago, the Parks and Recreation Commission used this building for a cultural center, and it was very successful. People will often comment, this is where I came for a play that I was in, 
or a, a dance, and that inspired us. The backstory is really awesome. This used to be just an abandoned building, and Ernie Garcia renovated the space. For a year, volunteers came and made this place beautiful. So I feel like it's really integral to the city because it's it's a it's a space where we can bridge that gap with the community from maybe um, lower income have you to maybe our middle class um, uh, society. So yeah, I believe it's an integral part of our city. late Frank Plash, who had been a very, very active member of the Valley Concert Association, and he left enough money that we could start renovating this place. Since we started the programming, we've had printmaking, poetry, i.e. glass blowing, and we're working on ceramic studio. Big, I want, to, I want to make it thinner. It's a lot harder to do it in the reverse because yeah, so Spirits and Arts, basically the whole idea around it is to bring the arts to a community that maybe doesn't have it readily available to them. You're going to see people come in. Don't worry too much about making it perfect that first time. <laughs> and work at the direction of a professional artist. One way to blend, you can take your finger and just kind of help smooth, smooth out the spots a little bit, okay? and paint a replica of a well-known piece of art. One of the reasons why we have it such at a low cost is to make it, you know, affordable. So to invite people to feel welcome and to come here and have a safe space to create and paint. So today we are reaching that level of diversity of activities in the arts. Uh, we're not through yet, but we're on our way. The Garcia Center continues to grow and engage artists in the community. Thanks to the vision of art lovers, the Garcia Center will be here for years to come for artists to have a canvas to show their work, learn, and create. To learn more about the Garcia Center, their upcoming events, and how you can play a role and contribute to the art community, visit their website at svvca.org. Art education is sometimes underestimated and often the first subject in the classroom to be cut from a curriculum. But understanding the importance of the arts and engaging our youth in creative activities at an early age can and does have a positive effect on the students and the community alike. I'm Lillian Vasquez. Thanks for watching. Join us next time as we continue to explore more expressions of art in our community. The mission of the Academy was to teach the mariachi music. I always say we're so lucky to have the students that we have. Um, you know, they've been through emotional trauma in their lives. Like I grew up getting bullied and here everyone's all friendly, it's drama free. Bringing students in, we're teaching them um, all the different aspects of the, of the visual and audio arts. Elvira Arts Academy offers anything creative. It's a safe space, that's why it's called safe space. I feel safe here. With us combining literacy and fun things with the arts, they realize it's really cool. You just want them to love music and love performing and giving them something to do that keeps them off the streets, that's, that's positive. The National Art Show is in its 103rd year, 
It's a citrus themed fair. Um, we have everything from metal art, ceramics, paintings, hand drawings, uh, and different expressions of art uh, on display here in the Citrus Building. Yes, this helps high risk kids, but this helps every kid. So don't get in your head about this stuff, yeah? Just let it all go. The kids understand that part of getting support from the community requires them to give back. Expressions of Art is supported in part by the California Arts Council, a state agency. Learn more at www.arts.ca.gov and the City of San Bernardino Fine Arts Commission.